right. the, uh, the rod photoreceptors will uh, glow green. Right? What gets me up every morning is the yeah, thought that really we can take a sample that you might submit for a cholesterol check. And we can take those cells based upon technology that was originally discovered here at the University of Wisconsin through Jamie Thompson. Each one of these that you see will become a, uh, a retina. We can make pluripotent stem cells from that, which is the foundation to create potentially any cell type in your body. And then we can take those cells and make retinal tissue from any patient that walks the face of the earth. David Gamm, I'm director of the McPherson Eye Research Institute and an associate professor of ophthalmology at the University of Wisconsin. I started my lab about 15 years ago here at the University of Wisconsin, in large part because of its stature as a center for stem cell biology. So it really gave me a platform to take off on the side of trying to find cures for blindness disorders. The initial discovery of stem cell biology was really the clay that allowed scientists and clinician scientists from multiple different fields. For me, it was ophthalmology in the retina. For other folks, it might be the liver or the heart. But it gave us the raw material to try and develop technology to take those cells and direct them to the different types of, of cells that are, are lost in the course of disease. And then the next step was what our laboratory did, was direct those uh, not to become just any random cell in the body, but specifically the cell types that we were interested in. And then once you can do that in the laboratory, then the third step is to be able to bridge the gap between the laboratory to patient care. I don't think that I would be in this field if I didn't also have the clinical exposure. Have they ever really changed? The real critical cell type that's lost in retinitis pigmentosa or age-related macular degeneration are the photoreceptor cells, the rods or the cones. And those are cells now that we can make, we can make efficiently and that we're partnering with uh, industry to be able to bring forward to patients. And we hope in the next two to three years, we'll start to see the initial trials. Just as important as that raw material being readily available here at the University of Wisconsin is the attitude of the whole university and, and its faculty and, and other researchers, which is to really band together and use different technologies, different expertise and resources to advance it in a, a safe but yet expeditious manner. I'm Bill Murphy, uh, and I'm a professor of biomedical engineering and orthopedics and, re and rehabilitation here at the University of Wisconsin, and I direct the Forward Bio Institute. The goal really is to take scientific breakthroughs that are happening every day at the University of Wisconsin and maybe elsewhere, and put them on a path that allows them to help patients and impact society. One of our focus areas is in regenerative medicine. I think where we were at the stage of the initial discovery was at a curiosity stage. Where we've gone, I think, has been progressively more and more practical. What can these cells be used for? A lot of what we do involves getting these cells to assemble into structures that mimic human tissues or organs. And sometimes that involves using a scaffold. And a scaffold in simple terms is similar to the, it plays a role that's similar to the role of a scaffolding of a building. It forms the sort of space filling structure that's then ultimately filled with what the cells are doing and what the cells are producing. There are adult derived stem cells that are now being used in clinical trials. There are some 600 plus clinical trials that use some form of adult stem cell as a therapy. Some of these are showing some degree of success, although we're certainly not at the finish line for most of these therapies. A good number of... Oh, gotcha, gotcha, there's a ton. We want every scientist in the world to be able to use the tools we're developing, and we want every patient that can be treated by the technologies we're developing to be treated by those technologies. If we don't work with companies, if we don't in some cases form companies, or become part of the process of forming companies, then we won't make it to that finish line. I'm Steve Vasuri. I am the VP of Business Development for STEM Farm. STEM Farm is a biomaterials company. We are using those biomaterials to apply stem cells to a lot of different applications, particularly in the pharma industry. It enables pharma customers to grow specific types of tissues so they can simulate various organs in the body, miniature brains or gastrointestinal tissues or livers. 
pharma companies are still trying to figure out the utility of these particular materials and these tissues that they're growing. It's very early days, but they're already being used. I really believe that we can build better models in order to more accurately reflect this physiology. I also think that there's a really important place for technologies coming out of the university for small businesses to take that and get that ready. To be able to vote and focus on those technologies exclusively. Rather than a large company trying to put some efforts to it, we're really focused on that and that I think helps the technologies move through the system faster. And the stem cell discovery and how it's been broadly applied and how it's been broadly disseminated around the world is I think a fundamentally perfect example of the Wisconsin idea and how powerful it can be.